Mr. Zimmerman, before we get to the obvious big news, um, I'd like you to address this agreement that the MLBPA Players Association with Tony Clark and the owners were able to reach. It, it's no secret that the union and the owners have had some issues over the year. How were you all able to resolve such massive issues in what seemed to be just a day or two? Yeah, I mean, I think that the beginning of the season and the kind of, I guess, what you want to say, forwarding of payments to, to help people kind of get through April and May, um, it just made sense on both ends. Uh, obviously, I think you're seeing some stuff come out today that the second agreement might not be as easy to, to do as the first agreement, but, uh, but I think it shows you that in times like this, people can come together. Uh, you know, when it comes down to it, I think the players and the owners have respect for each other. Uh, at the end of the day, it's two different sides of a business, and I'm sure you guys know as well as many other people that negotiations are part of business. And, you know, sometimes they're easy and most of the times they're hard. But uh, I think the important thing to remember is, is everyone wants baseball. We want to play. The owners want to have their teams on the field. And mo most importantly, I think the fans and, and the citizens that are kind of stuck at home right now want it. So we'll, uh, we'll work through this. We'll, uh, you know, we started to get some stuff today. And I think we have a, a call later today as well to kind of get the actual proposal of what it would look like moving forward. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can work something out because everyone wants sports right now and especially baseball. You know, America is not the same without baseball. It's hard to tell what day it is missing golf and baseball. Is it Schwer's day? Is it the cut day? Is it moving day? Uh, yep. And it's, it appeared to me that what really made this agreement work quickly though, Mr. Zimmerman was the established players were willing to give up for the younger players, uh, the Juan Sotos of the world, if you would. And the speed at which it happened, I really think should be a, a model for others in our economy. Uh, the established guys taking care of some of the younger folks. Well, I mean, those are the guys that were going to get hurt most by this. I think uh, you have a younger guy that's only maybe played one year in the big leagues or, you know, was going to get called up this year. Those guys, uh, I know it's hard for some people to believe, but they actually do live kind of paycheck by paycheck. Um, you know, you look at guys like myself who's been lucky enough to play for a long time, some veteran guys that have signed big contracts. Um, you know, one year is not going to not gonna hurt us. Um, but these guys, you know, a lot of these minor league guys, they don't even have a place to live. I mean, they rent places in the off season. They rent a place for spring training, and then they either rent a place for the season or live with a host family. So a lot of these guys, you know, this was this was scary for them. So it was uh, it was an easy decision for a lot of us veteran guys. Um, you know, the way we were brought up when we were the younger guys, the the older guys took care of us. So it was uh, it was our time to take care of them. And like I said, hopefully we can we can figure something out moving forward. And we're at the very beginning of these next negotiations, but, uh, you know, everyone wants sports back. Well, let's talk about that big news. Do you think baseball for July 4th is realistic? Um, of course, Mr. Zimmerman, you've been famous for not needing a full stint of spring training as some of the younger folks might. Uh, will you think the folks will be ready to play? Yeah. I mean, I think you definitely have to be careful. Uh, yeah. Like you said, I'm not a huge, huge fan of spring training, but I <laughs> I do, uh, I do think it's necessary. Uh, you know, you can go from playing spring training for two or three weeks. It's hard to, to get the adrenaline up and to really get after it in spring training. And then if you go right into games after only a couple of weeks, you're going to see some injuries. So I think we have to be careful with that. Uh, I think the biggest thing out of all this, um, you know, you're going to hear about the economics of it, but I think, you know, the health and the safety of, of the players, the, the, the field staff, the clubhouse staff, the traveling staff, um, you know, we're the ones that are going to be going out into a global pandemic to play. Um, you know, if it's not safe enough for the fans to come, I think that shows you that we're going into a dangerous situation. And if we're going to go out there, um, you know, we have families at home. My wife's about to give birth to our third kid. Uh, I don't necessarily want to be traveling all over the place and come home to a, a newborn baby. So I think a lot of fans forget that we're humans as well. We have families to worry about. My mom's a high risk person. She has multiple sclerosis. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of tentacles, I guess you could say that, that reach out all over the place. So the most important thing, you know, way above the economics of this is, is health and safety for not only us, the high profile players that are making all the money, but, 
more importantly, I think that the staff and the people that work behind the scenes to make Major League Baseball go. Well, and I appreciate you bringing up that personal matter. I didn't know if it was known about your uh, immediate uh, new arrival. Do you plan on playing, uh, Ryan, if, if, if we go Jan July 4th, or are you going to be one of the every pitch fans at home like my family? Um, you know, I think it all depends on what type of plan they put in place. Um, you know, the, you would have to be tested daily. We would have, I think, you know, the information and the testing and, you know, the scientific research that we're getting improves daily. I mean, you have the best scientists in the world working on something. You're going to get, you're going to get better information. You're hopefully going to get medication soon. And then obviously everyone's hopeful for a vaccine at some point, but the biggest thing for us is making sure nobody's tested positive when you're in that close of quarters. I mean, you can keep a clubhouse as clean as you want. You can say, we don't really contact each other, like say a football player would when they're playing in a game, but uh, clubhouses are, are interesting places. It's close quarters. And um, you know, we have to make sure if one person has it, it doesn't spread through the entire team. So we'll, uh, we'll hear some more of their proposal later today and, and, and see what they, they have come up with. But I think, you know, the testing um, is the most important part by far. Well, and I hope that this has done wonders for your golf game uh, anyway in the time off. And well, finally, Ryan, uh, you mentioned the, uh, your mom's MS. And of course, we've been honored to be part of the Zens Foundation for many years. Tell us the latest. Have we gotten some progress? And how is the foundation doing? Yeah, I mean, I appreciate your guys' support and obviously everyone's support in Virginia Beach. I think uh, the foundation started there. It still uh, has its roots down there. Heather, my wife and I have, uh, you know, done some events up here in the DC areas as, as well. So it's, uh, you know, it's grown bigger and better than we ever thought it would. You know, when we started it 15 years ago, it was, you know, something that, you know, I thought was a no brainer for me to use my platform to try and raise money not only for my mom, but for all the other people as well that are affected by the disease. So, um, you know, they're, they're making <clears throat> advancements every, you know, every year in, in MS. I think uh, from when my mom was diagnosed and the treatments they had for her um, to younger people now being diagnosed, the, uh, you know, the way that they can diagnose, how quickly they can diagnose it now, the options for treatment now. I mean, there's oral treatments for it now. When my mom was diagnosed, it was only it was only a vaccine and, and shot, you know, you can only get medic medication through shots. So it's come a long way. I think, uh, you know, there's been some promising things over the last few years, but the hope is to, to find a cure so nobody has to go through it and nobody's family has to deal with things like, like mine and, and uh, you know, obviously millions of others have had. So I can't thank you and, and Virginia Beach for the amount of support that they've given me and my family. And it's been a uh, it's been our pleasure, and, and uh, we have fun doing it. So I hope everyone else enjoys it as well. Well, wonderful. We'll add a direct link uh, on our home website, coastalvachamber.com, and you'll be able to join us in a direct contribution. Ryan, thank you for everything you've done for our hometown, and uh, we've got our tickets if they're still good for opening day. So uh, <laughs> we'll hope to be there. Well, I appreciate you having me on and uh, yeah, good luck with everything and everyone stay safe and, and stay positive. I think that's the only thing we can do right now. So have a good we day. Have a and tea time. We have a tea time at Bay Creek for you and Sean, whenever you're ready. Oh, you want Sean more than me. That's for sure. You want him on your team more than me right now. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Ryan. All right. Have a great day. Great. Perfect. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Hey, thank you. That's 10 for 10, sir. We really appreciate your time and hopefully we'll raise a few bucks. You'll at least I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.